and toes up down the net. And that perhaps was absolutely crucial because the moment of victory for Hu Yun, having survived a match point at 19.20, comes back to take the deciding game, 22.20, and book his place in tomorrow's quarterfinal. Quarterfinal tomorrow will be against either Kenichi Targo, the number four seed, or Chong Wei Feng. And of course, we'll be able to see that men's singles later on this afternoon. In fact, we'll be into this evening by the time that's on court. That's our seventh match today. Well, there you can see four defeats from four matches so far for Indonesia. Indonesia will be hoping for a lot better because, of course, they have the defending champions who happen to be the world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan. They're up next against the Danes, Rasmussen and Sorensen. Following that, we will have three singles to finish off the day. We'll have two women's singles, starting with Ti Jing Ying, the Malaysian number one, against the world champion from Thailand, Rachanuk Intanon. Number four seed here, Rachanuk, and then we'll have the men's singles that I've just been telling you about, because whoever wins between Kanichi Targo, number four seed, and the left-handed Chong Wei Feng will meet Hu Yun in tomorrow's quarterfinal. Then, of course, we will finish off with the lady who's been in four finals here in Indonesia, Sina Nawal, the three-time former champion, will play against the British number one, Kirsty Gilmore from Scotland. Kirsty Gilmore, incidentally, a magnificent win yesterday against Sayaka Takahashi of Japan. So plenty to look forward to still in this afternoon from day three of competition at the BCA Indonesia Open. Afternoon, and it's the defending champions of Indonesia, Mohamed Hassan and his partner Hendra Setiawan, who is going to take on the young Danish pair of Anas Rasmussen and Kim Astrup Sorensen. Here we have Setiawan leading on to court, and Mohamed Hassan following, and the two. Danes, Kim Astrup coming first, the left-hander, 22 years of age, 
and Anna's uh, score of Rasmussen, who is 25 years of age. Kim is the blonde one, and Anna's is uh, the darker one of them. On to court, and obviously we will have the traditional toss of the coin before we start anything to choose sides and who's choosing to serve and so on. So obviously we have not only the defending champions, we have the world ranking number one pair, the world champions from 2013, the Indonesians Hassan and Setiawan, who's had a, an awesome 2013, winning four Super Series, and obviously on top of that, the World Championships and the Super Series Masters Finals in Malaysia as well. So it was six wins last year, and this year they won the All England in March, and then they were runners up in the Japan Open last week. On the way here, they uh, to the second round, they beat another Danish pair, which is Mass Conrad and Mass Colling, and it was pretty close in the first game, 23-21 and then 21-11. And here we have confirmation, seeded one, world ranking number one, and the win and loss record of this year is 17-4. And I think to the story we have to tell as well that uh, Hendra Setiawan also won a world championship gold with his former partner, which is Marquis Kido, and they were also ranked one in the world in the, the late 19, sorry, 2008, 2009, and so on. And here we have Kim Astrup and Anas Skor Rasmussen. Kim is on the left, the blonde. Uh, they have no seedings and the ranking presently the best ranking is 21 and today's ranking is 22 so they are pretty close to their highest ranking ever Anas is 25 and Kim is 22 Anas is the taller one the 189 and weigh 87 kilos and uh, Kim is uh, more, as I say, the left-hander seeking towards the net and want to be the front player. Yesterday, they had a marvellous win against uh, Kai Yun and Kai Lu of China, winning 21-19, 12-21, and then the last of the siding, 21-15. So let's see if Indonesia will have their first win of the day on this court, number one. And here we've got the umpire and the service judge. Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan played a very good Thomas Kopp three weeks ago. They won all their matches but one, and they lost a crucial one to Dan Tan Hun Hyung and Hun Tien Hao of Malaysia in the semi final. And then the uh, Malaysians went on to win 3 0 and on to the final. Indonesia. And I have to serve to Asen. Love all play.
Good start. Farnas and Kim. Starting off very aggressively. And that's also what they need to do. My feeling is that should the Indonesian pair, as pair number one in the world, having a very strong attack, get into these strong attacking positions, I don't think the Danish defence can hold up to that. But let's see how it goes. It will be an interesting match, I hope. It should be mentioned as well that in the first round of the All England this year, the Danish combination beat the defending champions of China in that tournament, Xiaolong Liu and Xihan Qi, and they won as big as 21-12, 21-9, but then went on to lose to Korea in that second round. So uh, they have the history of being able to beat good combinations in one match and then not being able to pick up the same kind of level in the second match. Let's see if they can change that today. Cross court smash by Arnas. Catching Setia one off guard. Just waiting on a forehand defense. And he actually landed on his backhand and did not manage to get it back. And that was a very nice surprise smash cross court from Arnas Rasmussen. It's too short. Four shorts. Three. The umpire had no doubt. sign here that the Danish pair really have to watch out for all these flat exchanges in in my opinion and from what I've seen in the past this is where the Indonesian pair is really strong so luckily for Kim Astrup that's a service fault called before he actually played that return wide of that sideline so lucky to get a point In the back, that's a luckily recovery. Well done by Kim Astro. Well covered behind the back. I'm sure we'll get that in slow motion. That smash there, well played by Kim Astro. Good follow up, really chasing the shuffle. Well done.
Bravo. That was really bad luck for Setia one. I think it was the right shot to play. That disguise drop shot there. Kim Astrup was backing way off on that one there. Look at that. He's so way off. But they have to get over the net to get a point. defense by Setio one at cross court from the backhand side obviously it was not the best of shots from Anas but still that cross court whip was really strong and interesting to see that uh, Mohammed Hassan is uh, flicking quite a lot and that's not what we see a lot these days because most of them are getting a service for it Play by Astro. Oh, so it's over. Eleven can win the ball. So on to the mid game interval here with the smallest of margins. 11 10. Indonesia is having a one point lead. And that flick serve went out. So it's Kennedy Onesen in the Danish camp, the former world number two men's singles player coaching the Danish pair. Part one, 20 seconds. Part one, 20 seconds. And it's nice to see that both camps are making full use of their interval, discussing the tactics. What to happen next? Shows respect for your opponent to do that. That's attacking shot by Setia One. On that forehand side, the, the hip of Anas Rasmussen. Well played. Look at that, he's committed to his backhand. And that push down the line once again is proving to be quite decisive. Oh, sorry, not down the line, but down the middle. On a few occasions already, the channel attack has been very effective from the Indonesian point of view. And there, another flick serve. <laughs> Suddenly, four points in a row. 11 10 at the mid game interval. Now, 15 10. Four crucial points for. The world number ones, the world champions of Indonesia.
important for the Danish combination to get well out of the service situation. And so far, they're quite a lot under pressure when they're serving themselves, but also on return. Oh, that's called in. smallest slip of concentration under this scoring system in the men's doubles is crucial. 11-10 at the uh, mid-game interval and now 17-12 down. And against a pair like the Indonesians, it would be very tough to catch up now. It's interesting to think that uh, I've been coaching these two players, the Danish players, for many years. Back in Denmark, they've both been residing in Aarhus, the second largest city in, in Denmark, where I'm residing as well. Having done the coaching there for seven, eight years, they've been part of the setup for their uh, current Anna's Forever, and then Kim arrived in Aarhus. Uh, let's say four years ago, five years ago. And as both of them now have moved on to Copenhagen, onto the uh, National Center in Copenhagen, and there's training there, both of them. Oh. That's a beauty to finish off with, having Six match points, they only needed one. Sorry, game points, they only needed one. So it's 21 14 for Mohamed Hassan and Henry Setiawan taking this first game in very convincing style from the mid game interval. So it's all about the service situation as usual, it's all about getting control at the net as what we saw Setiavan do on this last game point and uh, that's where the Danes really have to watch out and see if they can shake up the Indonesian combination it's a very fast first game I would think about eight nine perhaps ten minutes saw that game point so well played by Setia One. So ready to begin the second game. Sure, you don't slip in the perspiration. 
on the court yet again a very good flick served by Hassan setting it up very nicely good counter attacking both the Indonesians and that's what they're so good at they know they serve well low and then suddenly this flick serve is coming and they're so good attacking it and now the Danes really have to watch out the train is not running away before they even blink to change the shuffle but the umpire agreed with the Danes not to Mohamed Hassan, look at that, how he works his way across that court. First there, then once again, and the drop shot, what a disguise, beautifully played. Wonderful to watch, such agility. combining look at that attack they were everywhere adding on the pressure from the word go on the Danes good recovery on many occasions but eventually the Indonesians managed to score the point and so convincingly so it's a very healthy lead 7-1 up Setia wants to serve Mastro clipping the top of the tape and now the Danes have to salvage some here 2-7 down and it's really crunch time they have to get points to make sure that they can stay with the Indonesian combination here That's well worked by the Danes. Very good left right combination. Smashes down the, the middle plus cross court smashes, playing to their partner's forehand. And it worked well. And Anas Rasmussen managed to finish it, reducing the deficit to four points. 3 7. Four, eight. Yeah. 
What a lovely variation in return of serve here by Mohamed Hassan. Playing that mid-court area. Very delicately played. Yeah, Anas knows he's got to watch out for that flick serve. Attack by Kim Astrup. Not going for the power smash, just placement down the middle. Creating a little bit of confusion who to take it. And a mistake was created by that. And that's a bad mistake by Anas. And he knows it. He should have played that much better than what he did. He served well, covered it well. Execution not so well. Much more healthy lead for the Indonesian pair here at the mid-game interval. 11-6, five points up. In the first game, it was just 11-10. And here we have the confirmation of the scores so far. 21-14, 11-6. Surely the lift was too short, but still the way that was put away, that was awesome. The smash here from Setia 1, not only very powerful, but also placed absolutely perfectly. And here we see possibly the best men's doubles play in action, Hendra Setia 1. The way he's playing and has played for the past 18 months is unbelievable in his new partnership with Mohamed Hassan. And the 2013 really came to life for them when they partnered up and won six so tournaments over. last year. Eight, and 13. the World Championship was just one of them. Danes are trying to pass the front player with smart little tricks into the midcourt area, but they are not successful every single time. The Indonesians are on top of it, cutting it off and adding tremendous pressure. And here we see a very good example of it because even that one is a simple shot, but they feel the pressure so much that Kim is lifting it out. So 
Well, a very commanding lead, 16-8. And having won the first game, 21-14, it definitely looks like Indonesia is going to have their first win on this court of today. Once again, it looks like that the Danish combination plays a very good first round as what they did in the All England this year. And yesterday, beating two very good pairs, but coming up against an overpowering opponent in the second round and not really able to step on and step into that situation of, of yesterday. So, 10 points adrift three points, and this match is over. Great opportunity missed by Kim Astro. Good serve, read it well. I'm sure when the dust has settled a bit that they will be thinking how to improve their game and they have learned a lot from it. The Danish combination number three after Matthias Bohm, Carsten Hogenson and the two Mass, Mass Conrad and Mass Colling, Anas and Kim are pair number three, and I'm sure they have learned a lot from playing in Japan and in this Indonesian Open. And it's back to the drawing board, back to the practice, and start improving. Lots of things still to improve. Oh, what a tournament they had so far. Once again, Mohamed Hassan saw that cross court coming from Kim Astro, and it was an easy kill at the net. And what a pair these two guys, Mohamed Hassan, Hinder Setiawan, world number one, and world champions, and defending champions. It will be very interesting to follow them for the rest of the tournament. I'm, for one, looking forward to that. And it was an easy win for them. Two straight games. Confirmation of 21 14, 21 11. And the players ready to follow the umpire off the court, waving to the crowds, and what a support for this Indonesian men's doubles pair in this stadium, Iskora Sinayan, the famous place for badminton in Indonesia and for many, many decades in the world of badminton. And here we saw a little bit of that channel attack down the middle where the Danes really have to start looking out what to do in their defense. And the coach is in action. Look, everything we see so far, the Danes under pressure in a defensive situation, once again on the floor and that Wonderful, wonderful drop shot. Very well worked by Mohamed Hassan. And Kim Astro throwing himself and did one as uh, this one. Can't remember if they actually won the rally or not, but uh, very good efforts. And a miss from Anas. 
but we just have to accept that the Indonesian combination, they were in total control in this match, winning easily in two straight games, and the Danes have to go back to the drawing board, go home, do some more practice, travel the world, learn some more, get some more experience. And here we have results of the day, the first five matches, and for the first time, Indonesia won a match, and how convincingly that was. And the matches remaining. next match coming up is Malaysia number one women's singles. So the next match on court is women's singles. Malaysia number one, Ji Jing E, up against the world champion, the number four seed, Rachanuk Intanon. And as far as Intanon is concerned, well, she's searching for good form. Her tournaments of late not her usual very very high standards so of course uh, this an opportunity one of the last opportunities uh, this little tour of tournaments super series events of course we were in japan last week indonesia this week and the tour moves on to australia next week so the last major events there's a couple of grand prix golds in the interim period but last of the Super Series before the World Championships where she will try and defend her title. Well, it seems extraordinary to say that Arachinok Intanon, still only 19 years of age. Goodness me, she's been prominent in world badminton for so long, since she was a 15, 16 year old. She was doing well in senior badminton, of course, three times world junior champion 
So this match is from the bottom half of the draw, the third quarter of the draw. And this has not, in the past, been a happy hunting ground as far as Horachinuk Intanon is concerned. She was the number five seed last year. She pulled out before the tournament even got underway. Her best so far is equal to this, which is the round of last 16. She achieved that three years ago. Two years ago, there she is. She lost in the first round to Sung Ji Hyung. What a tough round that draw that was. Sung Ji Hyung against Arachinok Intanon in the very first round. 19 years of age, as I say. World ranking of six. She has been as high as two. 15 weeks at number two when she was only 18 years of age. My goodness me. Well, in her first match yesterday, she had to play against the qualifier. The current world junior champion, Akane Yamaguchi, had to win in three games. 21-18 in the deciding game, having been well down. So to her opponent, the 23-year-old Ti Jing Yi from Penang in Malaysia. Well, 42 on the world ranking. That means she's gone up seven places from last week, making her first appearance here at the Indonesia Open. That's rather surprising statistic to me. Well, her first round match against Tira DC of Indonesia, 30-28. The second game, having won the first, 21-19, she had to save four match points. And if you're a Malaysian fan, well, that's rather ominous, isn't it? Because not only has Ratchanuk Intanon won the last meeting, which was in the first round of that Singapore Super Series event. She's won all five previous meetings in two straight games. So Ti Jing Yi yet to win a game.